Hello everyone and welcome to RBCM at Home Summer. My name is Jenny Arnold and I am one of the hosts for this summer's digital programs. Um, and today we will be going through the BC History Gallery and sketching some objects and historical objects that we get to see. Before we get started, I would like to acknowledge the land at which I am joining you on today. The museum and my home is located on the traditional territories of the Lekwungen speaking people, Songhee Squamalt Nation. I am an uninvited guest here on these lands and it is my privilege and honor to be able to work, live and play on this beautiful land. I am continuously learning about this land's history and its living culture. And so I encourage you to also know about whose land you're currently living on today. Um, the Royal BC Museum is full of many historical objects um, that help us better understand um, where we are in the past. And um, some things like toys, cooking instruments, stuff like that, um, they really help us know how life was in the past or even helped people like our uncle or grandmother, they may be using these, have used these objects in the past as well. And so for this session, um, we are going through the um, BC History Gallery up on the third floor of the museum. And I am joined with Chris O'Connor, who's a learning program producer here at the, oh no, learning program, pro, not producer, it's creator <laughs> of here De at develop developer. Develop developer. <laughs> there's there's so many learning program de developer here at the Royal BC Museum and also a co-host of these programs. <laughs> and Chris is up on the third floor. Hello, Chris. Hello, Jenny. <laughs> um, and actually, no one's here right now, so I'm gonna have my mask off, but then I'll put it back on just because there are a lot of people. Uh, in the gallery <laughs> and actually I was I was a learning program producer when I first started at the museum <gasps> and then at some point I became a program developer but the things I did <laughs> not much different so um absolutely <laughs> words 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 and objects 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 and so we're um as you said and and I didn't even tell you Jenny what I'm gonna do today no I'm excited um, but, to see but you actually like hit on uh some of the things I'm gonna I'm going to show so um, our minds are, are connected. Yes. <laughs> and what I wanted to do first is uh, because last month uh, we visited the Natural History Gallery with um, during my session and we looked at some specimens and sketched some specimens with um, an amazing comics artist, uh, Gareth Godin. Uh, today I don't have Gareth with me today. It's more just going to be looking and for you to sketch. Uh, what you see. So hopefully if you can get a piece of paper or get like something to draw on and something to draw with, whether the pencil, crayons, colored pencils, whatever you have, um, charcoal, <laughs> whatever you have is, uh, is great. Well, one of the ways that I like to think about museums first is uh, how we um, enter into a museum space is a, a lot of times I like to think about books and what I read on the page and how that helps me understand the world that I live in, different perspectives. Um, and so I have a book for you today and it's, it's just a short book. Um, I'm sitting here on the floor. I'll just give you a little quick uh, peek at, at my view, which is like an amazing view out the windows. Beautiful. To the, yeah, to the legislator. Just uh, last week uh, we were, or a couple weeks ago, we were over there. Uh, with the Hello History uh, program um, and the Bell Tower and the Empress Hotel. And I'm sitting here on the floor of the third floor foyer. And I have this book that maybe some of you have seen before, maybe not, but the book, book is called The Terrible Captain Jack Visits the Museum or A Guide to Museum Manners for Incorrigible Pirates and the like. So raise your hand if you're a pirate out there. Um, but even if you're not a pirate, um, we are all little, a little bit pirates at heart. Um, so this will help us enter into the museum a little bit. So Captain Jack was a mean and dangerous pirate and an occasional troublemaker. He often said or did the wrong thing, but he was also very curious. Captain Jack yearned to visit a fine museum to see what lay behind its doors, but what if he got into trouble? 
he asked his friend Steve, the ship's monkey, how, how should I behave in a museum? Steve, who had traveled to see all the great wonders of the earth and sea, explained that proper museum manners, what proper museum manners were to the pirate. While inside the museum, remember, control your body and sorry, sorry, Jenny, um, because you were just talking about a sword, your sword. Um, so you can't bring that to the museum. So no sword play. Um, <laughs> but we can figure some way for you to bring it into the museum. Uh, museum voices are quiet ones, but ask lots of questions. Use your eyes, ears, and imagination inside a museum. Walking is how to move in a gallery, even if you're excited. Keep your blooming fingers off the paintings and walls. Ask a guide if there are things you can touch or projects to do while, at, while you're visiting. And here's the thing that I really wanna sort of focus on today is do and try new things. Watch a video, spin a wheel, tie a knot and make a sketch. Find your favorite object, read about it or draw it in your sketchbook. Buy a postcard. You might pretend this is your private castle but do not eat snacks in the gallery. Um, and actually there, were, there, were, there was a family just before we started today that uh, some of the younger kids were saying that they were hungry and we wish we could eat snacks in the gallery, but um, it's best not to eat snacks in the gallery, but eat it in the, in the cafe or just outside. So keep learning. That's the really most important things with museum and have a great trip. So keep learning do new things and explore. And that's really one of the things about museums that are, that's really exciting is that um, we're, there are so many new things to learn, so many new things to see. And one of the ways that I think is really uh, a good way to, to learn and understand and um, be able to, um, explore further into a museum is to sketch, to use your pen and pencil um, and just look at something closely. So that's what we're gonna do today. And I'm going to, I'm walking down this little hallway here as we, um, as some people are wondering why I'm talking to myself. Um, we're, we're walking, now we're walking into, um, into the gallery space. And right now we're in the, our Living Languages exhibition. And I'm gonna turn the camera around just for a second so you can see where we're walking. If you haven't been to the museum before, this is a really amazing part of the museum. And, and the first place I would recommend you go to is Our Living Language, Languages exhibition that explores the incredible diversity of languages, uh, especially indigenous languages um, in BC. So, definitely worth checking out. Um, and maybe that's for another session, but we're going to go through this door right here and into the part of the BC History Gallery that Jenny was mentioning. And this, this either could be the beginning or the end, depending on how you, you visit. But we're in this room right now, which is called Century Hall. And it's called Century Hall because there are so many different kinds of objects here and each of the objects are connected to different centuries of the 20th century. So that was 1900 to 2000. And I wanted to first give our um, attention to, this is our first object. And it's right in the center of your picture here. It's very fancy <laughs> and um, and this is a suit and it's a suit that you probably wouldn't wear every day, but if you were gonna go out and especially to go dancing, um, this is the, the suit you would wanna wear, especially if you were um, living in 1974. And that's when this, this suit was made in 1974 by an, uh, a designer named Christopher Ryan in, from Vancouver. And it was for the disco area era. So disco is a certain kind of dance and a certain kind of music um, and really fun to do and dance. Uh, and the, the cost, the, what you wore 
was was really important. So we're going to look at this for a couple minutes. Um, so definitely start to just with your pen and pencil and your paper, just start to think about the general shape. Um, clothing is so interesting to draw. Um, thinking about the shape of the, the upper part, you'll notice that the pant legs flare out and that was the style of the time. Um, the more flared out, the, the better. Um, so, and under those, under those pant legs were probably like really super fancy shoes too. Um, but that really helped when you were dancing to have your, your flared pant legs go all out. So as you're drawing that and you might, as you start to get the outside outline of this disco suit, um, then, and also that sort of center line there, then you might wanna get the little details as well. So on the, on the, um, on the sleeves, there's that white detail on just on the end of the sleeves. And then in the front, there's the white uh, design on the front as well. So I wanted to show, we'll just spend another minute, but I wanted to show you this because it was created in 1974 and I was born, I'm giving away my age here, but I was born in 1974. So when I was born, this was being made this is not something that I would have worn <laughs> as a baby, but it might've been something that my parents uh, wore when they went out, um, maybe like not right after I was born, but maybe like a little bit after when they wanted to celebrate my birth, they went out dancing and they put on their disco outfits. Um, so this is really interesting in a, in a museum to have something like this that was 70, 47 years old of, of, an, of an article clothing that speaks to that period of time. You wouldn't find, you might find some people wearing uh, something like this, but it would, it wouldn't, you don't, wouldn't typically see someone uh, wearing something like this. So clothing is something that really um, gives us a sense of a time period. And that's why clothing is so important to museums. Um, and not just, not, uh, Lots of, not everyone was wearing the same kind of clothing in 1974. So this was a certain kind of person would have worn this certain kind of uh, disco outfit. Um, but there were so many different people, so many different uh, cultures, so many different experiences in 1974 and people wearing lots of different kinds of outfits. But uh, disco is, is not as much of a thing now as it was in the 1970s. So just 10 more seconds as we're sketching, make that those last details, especially the, I'll, and I'll pull in a little bit to the collar as well. Those long flared collars are pretty impressive as well. And the zipper goes all the way down to the belly button, which is, I, I don't know, it's a question, it's a question for you on chat um, and on Facebook Live. Is this something you would wanna wear? Like right now, is this something that you would feel good about wearing? Would you like to wear something like this? Jenny, what do you think? How would you answer that? I, I don't know if I would wear it specifically. <laughs> I My mom was really into disco when she was young. Ah. She graduated high school in 77. So she loved ah. disco. And nice. I also know like modern day kind of disco is that there's the band BTS who came out with the song Dynamite that was kind of had a disco oh, yeah, vibe yeah. to it. Right, and right. so they were wearing similar outfits to this. So it's um, it reminds you of an era, but also it could be modern at the same time, yeah, depending on sure. how you wear it. <laughs> For sure, because everyone, like every era is also reflecting back and echoing past eras too, because people are inspired yes. by things that happened in the past. And museums are important in terms of like informing us of what it was like back then. We could, we could take, take some of those ideas and, and use it uh, in, yes. a, in a modern or contemporary way. Yeah, my, my best friend, she did um, costume design at UVic. And uh -huh. um, when she took a course on different eras and different outfits and how living now in the 21st century, a lot of design and clothing is kind of a combination of a bunch of different eras when before it was very specific. So it's really cool to see like, this was from like the disco era, you could see that. But nowadays people could wear that and you would have 
no idea. It's really cool. Yeah, totally. All right, so we now we are on the move. We were in 1974. That I was just a baby, um, and a lot of you probably were not even born. Um, but we're going to go even back further in time. And Jenny, you were saying in the beginning about how museums can capture a sense of time through through clothing, which we just saw, yes. but also through toys you mentioned as well. Mm -hmm. So now we're in a part of this little corner and some, a lot of times people don't even see this corner, um, but this is a little alcove near the train station. If you're familiar, with, you actually hear the train station, the train right behind me. So this is a little alcove that talks about the um, Can Canadian Pacific Railroad and the train travel across Canada. Here are some model trains that might be a little hard to see. Um, and these are some things that you might have seen if you were on the train. And if you were a kid, you might have been given or brought with you a stuffed bear. So we're gonna look at this stuffed bear, but right before that, I wanted to bring your attention to what's right beside it. So there's a telegraph, um, a Canadian Pacific Railway Company's telegraph, and this is from 1945. And my mom, was born in 1945. So just like that um, disco outfit was born on the year that I was, that, that was made on the year that I was born. This telegraph was made uh, in the year that my mom was born. And if she was a baby and maybe they, because I grew up in the United States, maybe she traveled as a baby to Canada and traveled across Canada and maybe she's given this bear for the trip. So this is a Canadian um, Pacific Steamships tourist tag on it. Um, and I think this is a Steve bear as well, a, a very famous kind of bear, um, stuffed bear from Germany um, that was made, uh, has been made, so many bears have been made over the, over the 20th century, over the last 100 years. Um, so, so we're gonna draw this bear. So we drew the disco suit and that's something you might wear. Now we're drawing, drawing the bear. So similar with the disco suit, I want you to just think of the, the outline to begin with, especially like we started with the disco suit at the top. And uh, you might wanna do that with the bear as well, the really prominent ears that come out and actually from doing the session last month with Gareth, because we drew a bear. Some of the, even though this is a stuffed bear, some of those ideas can apply to this bear too. They have those, those rounded ears, it's sort of rounded shoulders. And even as you're, as you're drawing, you're getting that shape more. Um, then you also want to think about the, the different parts of this bear too. So, um, there are pants, <laughs> there's a nice pair of shorts or pants uh, on the bear. So how can you sketch or draw that on the bear just to this, make this really a specific kind of bear that you're looking at? Um, as I'm looking closer to, I'm looking more at that tag. Uh, it's really interesting the, the the string coming around the neck. There's that little white uh, red uh, dot holding the string onto the tag. And then just go closer just for a second to see what's on the tag. So there's Canadian Pacific Steamships Taurus. So as you're looking at this, you, as I'm looking more and I'm observing more and I'm, I, this is, again, this is an area that not many people even see. They don't even see that there's, there's a, teddy bear here. Um, in fact, people are probably walking by and like wondering what I'm doing in this little alcove. But um, so just because it does get, it does get missed a lot. Um, but if you're looking really closely at this bear even more, you'll notice that it's turned a little bit, it's angled a little bit to the side. Um, so like having that be part of your sketch to just sort of to 
have it be angled a little bit off to the side, but if you don't, if it's straight ahead, that's okay as well. It's one, one of the wonderful things about sketching is that um, what we see is, is really important in terms of making close observations, but then you could also make changes in ways that um, make you feel happy. What, how do you wanna make, maybe you wanna put a, a little, maybe you think this bear is a little cold with only shorts and, a, and pants, but maybe you wanna add a shirt or maybe you wanna add a hat to it. So, um, so we'll just spend another minute looking at this bear. Um, and I have the same question to you as I did about the disco outfit. I asked you whether you would like to wear that disco outfit. So my question is, would you like to have a bear like this? Is this a kind of bear that you, um, and whether you're an adult or a kid, um, is this something that you would like to have? Is this something that you, either when you were a kid or as a kid now, is this something that you, you would like, so something like this is something you would want to have, especially if you're going to travel across the country on a train. So you can just add that into the chat or the comment section as well. I know. All right, Jenny. I would, all right, Jenny. You're going. You're, you're going across the Canada. Um, you you say yes. You would like to have. Yes, this there. I have always been such a fan of like like little stuffies or like figurines and things. And yeah, I, unlimited play and imagination can come from these types of objects and toys. Totally. And I I would love to have a bear like that. Even now, it seems so cuddly. <laughs> For sure, for sure. And then also just like everything that you would see out the window going across Canada, uh, out the window of the, the train, it'd be nice to be able to like have the bear see that too. That's, that's I, I, could rem rem I could remember when my kid was, um, was really into stuffies and, and the stuffy did a lot, did all the things that my kid did. So, um, so yeah, I would definitely want to have this for my trip across Canada too. All right, so we're going to go to one more space. We have about five we more in... minutes left. Great, perfect. So 1974, the era of disco, people were dancing, people were um, wearing fancy clothes. I'm just going to turn the camera around. People were wearing fancy clothes. I, this is my disco move. Um, 19, so that's 1974. 19, and I was born on that year. 1945, my mom was born that year and people were traveling across Canada on the Pacific, um, Canadian Pacific Railroad Railway. Um, and that telegraph was that, at that time. And so my father's mother was born in 1921. So that was a hundred years ago. And what I'm guessing is that this, oops, what I'm guessing is that this kitchen in the, in the um, old town section of the BC, uh, the BC history gallery, I'm going to guess this is about what, 1921. So a hundred years ago. I might be a little bit off, but let's imagine that it's 1921. So we went from 1974 to 1945, and now all the way back to 1921, so 100 years ago. And we're looking at this kitchen, which if you look at it, in certain ways, it's similar maybe to a kitchen, your own kitchen. There is a sink, there is a stove, there is a table and a chair. There is artwork up on the wall or photographs. So in some ways it's very, very similar to maybe a lot of the kitchens that you've been in or that you have, but in other ways, it's very, very different. The stove probably looks very different than the stove that, that you, you have in your kitchen. Maybe, maybe not. The water, the the sink looks very different, probably. The clock up there looks probably different than the clock you might have in your kitchen. So things were similar, but also different. And even just like looking at the, 
the towels drying above the, the stove because they didn't have a dryer. So they, they used the fact that the stove would create heat, the heat would rise, and then they were using that heat to dry the towels that they had. So all these really interesting things. And then even on this table, and that's what I'm gonna focus in on is this table. Cause I love drawing tables and chairs. And then also you can make some choices in terms of what you wanna draw on the table too. So um, I'm noticing a lot of different kinds of things on it. So as you're drawing this table and this chair, these, this chair, and this table and the things that are on it. Um, you could maybe pick something off the table. So one thing I'm noticing right now is that there's this lamp, it looks like maybe a kerosene lamp um, right ahead with the green base. I noticed that they're right in front of me, there's a lemon and then there is, um, it looks like maybe some kind of coffee drink with whipped cream maybe, or maybe that's porridge, I'm not sure. Um, right beside it, in the middle of the table, there's a pie, like I'm, I'm imagining that maybe that's an apple pie, but maybe I'm thinking that because there's an apple right beside it. So as you look closer, you start to think about all the, well, like this kitchen was um, active, people were in here, and then it, it got frozen in time in 1921, a hundred years ago. And we have to put the pieces together to imagine like why are, what is happening here, right? Right behind the pie looks like a little white thing. And I'm guessing that that's probably maybe a timer, um, but, or it might be uh, like a, a something for, I don't know, like it might be, it might be for something else, but it might be a timer. So this was when my, my grandmother was born in 1921. So this might be the kitchen, a certain kind of kitchen that she, when she was born, she was born into. And she, her mother and her father and her mother um, carrying her around the, the kitchen um, and uh, while while her mother and father were were doing were doing things around the kitchen, so um, so just imagining that this was this was the kitchen of my grandmother one hundred years ago. So my last question to you, I was asking if you if you wanted to wear that disco outfit, if you wanted to have that bear, and then if you would want to be in this kind of kitchen? Is, is there anything in this kitchen that's making you wish that you can go back in time a hundred years ago and uh, be in this kitchen? Jenny, what do you think? Would you want to be in this kitchen? I think I would like to be in the kitchen for a certain amount of time and then I would yeah. like to go back to now. Um, yeah, and why I, is that? I think it'd be really cool to try out the um, older gadgets because it looks uh -huh. like there is like an old style can opener in the corner. Yeah. And yes. yeah, that exactly. So that would be really uh -huh. cool. Um, yeah, there's, there's a couple of objects in here that I thought would be kind of fun. I really like even the um, little tray that the pie is on. And that looks like a, it reminds me of what um, you'd have like breakfast in bed on. Like a little- Yeah, right, right. <laughs> yeah, so like there's still stuff that we use today that I see in here. It would be really cool. But then because I'm so used to modern day technology, like microwaves <laughs> or <Yeah. laughs> things like that, or things that automatically like turn off and on, that would be a bit nice, but it would, I think it would yeah, be I... interesting. <laughs> I think there are not any microwaves uh, in this kitchen. That's understandable. <laughs> and I see in the back there, there's um, a little uh, uh, thing for washing. Um, <laughs> I'm blanking on the name of the the uh, the uh, little uh, wooden thing to to wash your your clothes on. Um, so yeah, there's it would have been. Uh, it would be cool and also it might get exhausting. We've gotten so used to like just throwing our things in the washing machine or um, or or 
or cooking in a certain way. So yeah, that's that's interesting, Jenny. That it's like, um, yeah, we uh, <laughs> there are some things that are similar and some things that are are very different. Um, and and there are reasons like we can think about the reasons why why they did change. Um, maybe because it was more efficient and um, easier to do. Um, so people decided to to make some some changes to the the different kinds of tools and uh, instruments that they would have in the kitchen. So we saw three different objects. Um, here, I'll go into this other room. Um, so we saw three, and I'll actually sit in this fancy chair <laughs> in the hotel lobby here. So, and now there's no one around, so I'll have my mask off just to end. So we saw three different objects, three different ways of looking at history through the things we eat, the things we play with, and the things we wear. Um, and that's just the beginning on museums. There's so many other ways to explore history, our own history, our collective history, our way that we understand ourselves now, the way we could try to empathize and understand what it was like maybe a hundred years ago. Um, that's one of the reasons I love museums. So thank you so much. I, I would um, love to see uh, any of the sketches that you created, feel free to put it in the chat or the comment section or, or send it along to us. And uh, thank you so much for, for joining today. Thanks, Jenny, for, for hosting today. Definitely. Thank you, everyone, so much for joining us here today at the Royal BC Museum. Um, we look forward to seeing you next week when we'll be looking at a mystery object next week. And also, we'll be making some Play-Doh as well. So a lot of cool things next week. Um, but until then, take care, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody.